I hope so. Yes. Yeah. So in the uh, where's the page? In in this page, we've got this little formatted string that takes like the title of the product, uh, the price of it, and sometimes also the quantity, and it creates these strings, right? So our, our goal for this little adventure right now is to do the formatting in PureScript and then use it from React and just call the function into, uh, into what's it called. Does that make sense? Yeah? OK. So let's do it. First things first, let's make a module, and we'll just call it product. Uh, it doesn't really matter where we put it, but yeah, probably don't do that. <laughs> uh, let's just put it right there. That seems like a good place. Product. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and so to define a module, OK, wait, so what is a module? Uh, effectively, it's a collection of functions and data types, maybe, and also maybe type classes. But like, it's the, the unit that you use to group things together. Uh, so the syntax is the word module followed by the name of the module uh, and then where and then you define your um, your functions inside there so uh, we're gonna have a function named format and uh, I think what's helpful before we get too far there is to look at what this format thing was doing that is in product, right? So this line here, it, it takes the title, the price, and then something weird with the quantity here that we're going to have to change because it's not going to work, and makes a string, right? So the title is a string. I'm sorry, starting from the left. The price is uh, 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 what we would use in PureScript as a number. The quantity should be an int rather than a number. So like. Number is like float in most other languages. So like something that's floating, but like decimal, whatever. Uh, ints are ints. And then title is a string, right? So our format function should take a number, an int, and a string as arguments and give us back a string. Does that make sense? Cool. So let's take a number, an int, and a string and give back a string. Is this is this syntax okay? Because I didn't really talk about it. <laughs> so if we have the uh, price and the what was it? Great quantity and the title, then we should be able to make that little function in there, right? So what did uh, Maybe we can do that. So what are we doing here? We did like two string in pure string, like two string. Yeah, it's called show. <laughs> but yes, it's two string basically. Where's this, this bottom on the left? Where do you have that state? But not everything has. Uh, at the top level? Uh, uh, yeah, oh, source so slash right product dot, dot purse. Uh, it's type class. You're doing type class. This is good. So we want the title, and then we want to append onto it this dash. And so this is like HTML escaped dollar. So we can just do dollar. And then we want to add on the price. But price is a number, right? So this, this append function here needs both of the, oper both of the op sides of it to be the same. So we have a string here, and we need this to be a string. So we do as Gil said, and we use show to change the number into a string. What would happen if we didn't do that? That's a great question. Let's just figure that out right now. So we save that, and then we, oh, well, we've got a lot of problems. <laughs> so let's import prelude. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, so we get an error here on line seven, right? The error is that we couldn't match number with a string and not really a good explanation why. But you can see the column and everything. Column 22? Is that 22? I don't know. So what it's saying is that this is a string, and it's expecting the other side to be a string as well, but it's a number, and that doesn't work, right? So if we use shell, we can convert from the number to the string, and if we save now, build successful, right? But that's not the whole story, right? Because we need... Uh, I'm sorry? Do you need help? Or are you good? Okay. Cool. Uh, and then the last thing that we need is to do something weird with this quantity thing, right? So what does this do? This looks if quantity exists, and then if it does, we make x with the quantity on that, otherwise we return null. So uh, there's no null in pure script. So like we can't copy this. <laughs> we can't copy this straight over, and that actually means that there's two problems with this. One is that we can't do the same implementation, and the other is that sometimes this is null, but there's no null in pure script. So what's going to happen is it's going to explode if we try to do this exactly like it does. So we need to be a little more careful with what we pass into PureScript, if that makes any sense. If it doesn't, wait like five minutes and it might. So uh, we're going to just assume that we did the right thing here. And uh, I think this line is getting too long. So I'm going to say format quantity and then pass the quantity in there. And then down here, do it. So this is just because there's like too much going on already, but we take in a uh, int and give back a string, right? So format quantity uh, yeah, whatever. So um, we don't have we don't have nulls, but like the real thing that we're trying to do here with this formatting is not like guard on nulls. What we're trying to do is not display this time zero thing, so or, or times like something that doesn't exist. So if it's not there, or if it's like time zero, we don't want that either, right? So we can like hack around it and just be like, as long as uh, the int's not zero, the quantity, then we can. I'm sorry. It would. It would make a lot more sense. However, doing that's not very easy. <laughs> so. Uh, in order to get something like compiling and on the screen, let's start with this and, and, and iterate. Yeah. So if the quantity is zero, I mean, that's exactly what you should do, right? Because this is not the same as what's over there, but whatever. Uh, yeah, you can, and we should, <laughs> but for now. <laughs> no, but that, that's, that's actually a good question. Is, uh, should we avoid this kind of, because uh, I'm learning right now, should we avoid this kind of, uh, I think a lot of people have opinions about that. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I, I, I'm of the opinion if my students write this, up, they will they won't pass the exam. Yeah. Right. So for me, he has opinion. <laughs> yes, exactly. This is super confusing for me. I don't do booleans. I don't understand what the hell's happening here. And like any time I get to an if statement, I have to stop for like five minutes and figure out what's happening. That's like, that's just me. I mean, I, mean, I don't think it's just me, but that's, that's how I am, right? So I would prefer to not do that. But, well, I figured it'd be a little easier than having to cover pattern matching as well before we get something done. <laughs> but okay, so let's, we've got two things to, to improve, right? One, don't do an if statement. Two, don't just uh, change null into zero, right? So two things to work on, not a problem. So we got this. It compiles, oops, and we could start using it, right? So uh, I guess the thing that's important here is to find out 
what it compiled to and like how we would use it, right? <laughs> so we had this go into source slash pers, right? All of the compiled modules. And so this is every module that we're using right now. Quick question related to that. Yes. Is it possible to have your output and all the other, like the output of your source and all the other source code different places? I feel like yes, but. You can look it up another time. I was just curious yeah. if you can. I think you probably can, but you'd have yeah, to do a lot of like uh, stuff. Yes. Um, so product, that's our joint. It outputs these two things. One is an externs file. What does that mean? Not important. We're not going to go over it. The other is the actual compiled JavaScript. So this is what, uh, what this module compiles down to, this right here. So it looks very similar to just regular JavaScript that you would write, except for all these callbacks. But it looks pretty similar, right? So our format quantity thing here. How did you find the file that you compiled to? Uh, it's in product slash index.js, if you could close it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. OK. Um, so it pulls in a couple things, not really important. And then uh, it makes these things, right? So format quantity, we were checking if it's 0. If it is, we return an empty string. Otherwise, we add x to the front of it with a space. And what do we do here? We check if, well, first we assign it for some reason. I don't know, it's probably like some kind of compiled thing. We, and then we check if it's zero. Or I'm sorry, we, hmm. we assign the result of checking if that's zero and then use that in the conditional. So if it's zero, then we return the empty string. Otherwise, we do this thing where we add the quantity. Uh, I don't know if we really want to go into why it has all this stuff here, but we're using show on quantity, okay? So we can, we can come back to that later. I'm actually impressed that it does plus string, because isn't it using a type class to do mono Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Is it like specializing for string, maybe? Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's format quantity, and then format looks like this, right? We take in a price, a quantity, and a title, and we give back the string. So here, we take in a price, a quantity, and a title, and give back this string, right? But this doesn't look like normal JavaScript, right? And it doesn't look like what this was here, right? But, uh, you have to be the exactly, exactly. And this goes back to what Gil had asked, if you partially apply a value, do I get a function back, right? And so that's what's happening here. If we call format with price, we're gonna get back this function that takes a quantity and a title and gives you a string. And then if we apply quantity, we get back a function that takes title as a string. And then when we finally apply title, we get back the string, right? So it's pretty slow then, right? And uh, then, uh, over when you scale it out, that's every a, function you write, JavaScript gets created this way. That's a question that I don't want to answer mm -hmm. for two reasons. One, I don't know. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Other people have answered it much better than I can right. fumble through. But it has been discussed a lot of times. And uh, what we're going to do in a couple minutes is not make it do this so that it looks more normal. Um, huh? Good. <laughs> so then we just export the things, right? This is, uh, I guess, if you leave off the export list, it just exports everything. But we could say specifically we want format and format quantity. Right? And then it exports those. So but like, oh, if we, yeah, if we only say we want format to come out, oh, yep, there it goes. Then it just exports format, right? And so this is just modular exports, like common JS stuff, right? So you can just import it, hit the format, and you're good to go, right? So if we go to our product.js thing, we can import format from, and we need to start traversing things. So we go up to pers, and then down into product, and then that should get us the, uh, the index file out of that. And then we, we pull out, we un, unwrap the, the format from, uh, from here, from this object. Does that make sense?
Where do we use that for? Yeah. Oh. We're not using it yet, but we will in a second. Uh, right, so if we try to use this, we need to do that because it's React. And then we call format, we pass in the price, and then remember it returns a function, so now we pass in the quantity, and that returns a function, so we pass in the title. Ooh. <laughs> and then, uh, Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that next. Um, so that should work like we just did. It's not going to. If you try to run this, it's gonna blow up on you. Or maybe not, maybe it just doesn't care. Oh, I don't have it running. <laughs> that might be helpful. Uh, what was it? That's beautiful. So that goes, does its thing, tries to load up. Boom, blew up, right? So we can try to diagnose this. We don't really have to. What's happening is that uh, we're passing in sometimes quantity that's null. And so when you try to call two string on a null, it blows up, right? So we can circumvent that real easily. Uh, <coughs> Jesus. <laughs> if we uh, uh, actually, that's dumb. Let's not do that. Pretend like I didn't do that. Okay. <laughs> Let's just say quantity <laughs> or zero, right? If it's null, we throw zero. If it's not null, then everything's fine. Does that make sense? And then if we come back to the page, ta-da, everything works like we thought it did. Add it to the cart, one in there, two in there, buy all of those, right? Works for both cases. Does that seem okay? Questions? Oh, that's fun. Well, we can turn watch off, I guess, and then it won't do that. Or it can just recompile all the time. Is that fun? <laughs> uh, either way works. That's weird. How come it's not? Is it? Huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I use maybe from uh, your script, Yeah, we can do that. We should do that. Let's bite off a smaller piece first, though. <laughs> so, uh, is everybody good to this point? Can you write JS real quick? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? So, even though you're exporting it on the module export object, which is common JS, is Webpack just able to import? both styles, like export defaults and... Yeah, because like whatever is doing the, the like underneath of this, like the underhood stuff, mm -hmm. is, is uh, able to handle both of those. Okay. And maybe it's the browser, maybe this is just running in Chrome natively, but like either way it can handle that. And that's more of like a, a ES thing, anything else. Good? All right, let's do some stuff, huh? There were a lot of complaints about what I wrote, and I, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, pattern matching. Let's pattern match. If the quantity is zero, you get an empty string. Otherwise, quantity Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Ta-da, pattern matching, right? And this is similar to what we were doing in the REPL, where we're defining each of the different uh, uh, cases at the top level. 
and, and using that to figure out what to do. Yes? Is there like a different way like solve? Yes, like yes, yes. There's lots of different ways. So we could do this way where we say uh, case quantity of, and if it's zero, then you get empty string. And if it's anything else, then you get that, right? And that works as well. Is the preferred way of doing it it's kind of a convention or? I think it depends on who you are as a person. More than anything else. I don't, I'm not sure that there is a convention. There is one more way that we can do it, at least one more way. Uh, when you have a lot of cases, sometimes this is nicer so you don't have to repeat the function every time, but if you just have a couple, what's yeah. Yeah. So there's one more way we can do this. Oh, <laughs> write it again. Sure. Uh, let's give it a prime right there, huh? Put it in like primes. Oh, wrong spot. Okay, whatever. So another thing that we can do is use this sugar that says whatever that argument is, whatever that first argument is, uh, that's what we're casing on. And in that case, we have, uh, we have to actually name it here, just because it's not in scope that's anymore. That's actually kind of nicer. So that way you're not binding to a value outside of that. So yeah, yeah. And, and this is like, this is the, where they kind of borrow this from Scala, right, where you can use underscore for for building a function, because really that's returning a function, right? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. That's exactly that's exactly how Scala works. Is you use underscore yeah. in an expression. Scala borrowed it from other Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. Yeah. But yeah, they all have. So but but it's not exactly. Like yes. Type. So why did you put quantity if you removed it? That's what I don't understand. Like, oh sure sure sure. So no, like downstairs, like. Sure. So here we've named quantity right here, right. right? And then we can just use that there, yeah. right? We don't need to name it again, right? We can, it doesn't matter. It'll just shadow it. And like sometimes it'll complain about that. But like here, we haven't named anything, right? So if we try to use quantity here, well, let's just do it. If we try to use quantity like that, then what it tells us is unknown value quantity, right? It's not in scope anywhere in this function. Or outside of the function, I think. Yeah, no, but can't you just exactly show show underscore? Oh, wow! These are these are great questions. I don't know. Does that work? Quite like that. Nope. Because the underscore explicitly refers to a non-this function, so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so is this? Uh, you're not going to get the sugar in Haskell, right? Yeah, you can do something similar in Haskell. There's, uh, if you uh, pull in the extension lambda case, well, lambda case yeah, yeah that gives you that. Yeah. Which well, is sorry, you just don't have the underscore anonymous functions. In oh, yeah, yeah. Well, don't you? Actually, <laughs> Did you mean, oh, that was stupid. I coughed right into the microphone. What? In Haskell, I was just using it. I was like, well, in Haskell, you can use underscore, but it's a head of So. We still, I don't know. I don't know. I, we were going down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Where did you make this file? Source slash product. That purse. Is that uh, good or you? Okay. Uh, yeah, so. Cool. We're good there? Yeah? Oh, gosh. Uh, that looks good. Cool. So. So, how did this work for me? But I did not explicitly export. <coughs> Will it implicitly export? Yeah, if you don't provide an export list, it exports everything in the module. And, I mean, we can just do that. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so there's that. What was the other thing we were supposed to do? Uh, maybe. Yes, exactly. What? <laughs> All right, so 
if we get a maybe int, right? We do that, and then what's going to happen here? Don't know what a maybe is. Uh, I don't think we have maybe. Yeah. It's a library. It's a Where's uh? So we can install uh, and save it. Peer script. Maybe. One no s maybe. Cool. So if we install peer script maybe. But maybe is a type. Yes. Oh oh the the word maybe. Like is that what you're asking? It's type constructor. That's what it's like. But it's not a type on its own. It's not a type, it's a type constructor, and it's sure. kind of start to start. Yeah. Well, yeah. type to type in pure script. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not like a recent change, right? Change the I think type. so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if we install that, then no, don't do that. That one. Now, yeah, we're getting good errors, right? So this one is that we uh, passed in a maybe int, but our function was expecting an int. So. Did, did you do that when it says save or dependency save? Save. Save, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and same thing, right? If we have nothing, then it's that. If we have just a quantity, then we do that, right? So here we're still pattern matching. We're still doing the, the lambda case deal. Except instead of looking for zero, which is weird, we look for nothing. If it's nothing, you get back the empty string. If it's uh, if you have a quantity, then you get back that. Um, I feel like it would make sense to look at what maybe is. Does that quick, seem <laughs> quick syntax question? Yes, please. Uh, I don't remember the language I'm familiar with. Like you do roughly nothing or zero with a you know, pipe or whatever else. Can we do that here? Nothing or just zero? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, but yes. <laughs> He's saying like, so... Oh, oh, I see, I see. Or just zero, just basically say both nothing and just zero, just give us an empty string. I think there's a lot of like syntactic stuff that I don't know anymore. I don't and think probably... Haskell doesn't support that, and I don't think CareerScript supports it either. But I think the workaround is create a where clause and the where have that case there and then just set it in the cases you want. It's kind of a shitty word. Rust has it. I'm sorry? Okay. Uh, does that make sense? Cool. So you know, let's take a quick look and see what this maybe deal is all about. So what is maybe? Oh gosh, there we go. Data dot maybe. So it's a data type that's parameterized by another type. Like you're saying, it's a type constructor. And it has two value constructors. One is just where it has that, whatever that polymorphic value is. And the other is nothing, where there's no value. So it's sort of like uh, a list that either has zero elements or one element. That's a nice way to think about it, a nice way to intuit it. Um, and uh, it gets a lot of press for being like what you would call a type safe null, but either of those are fine. An optional value, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of ways to like internalize it and just find the one that works for you and use it. Um, so that's all fine and dandy. And we're, we're compiling over here, aren't we? Yeah, we are. So, yeah, but this is, a, this is a problem, right? So the problem is we're passing in an int, but we need to pass in a maybe int. So here comes the fun, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got it, man. So I don't actually know how it works. Let's find out. Data dot maybe pulls in everything. So if we want to make a well, hold on. What do we got here? So we want to be able to pass in either nothing or just, right? 
Uh, and what is nothing exported as? Maybe function is what we want. So this is uh, just a value, right? So nothing we should be able to just throw in there if we need it. And then just looks like it is returning this function, which means it takes a value and does like the JavaScript-y thing. So we would have to do, we could do two ways. We could do, uh, hmm, can we? Well, we can just do new dot uh, just of the value. I feel like we could also use this just.create thing. Yeah, let's do that, because that, that takes care of stuff for us. So we can just say just.create on the value, if it's there, right? So let's import. Hey, what file were you just in? Uh, I was in. How did you, you just knew that that was there? Yeah, so uh, the build, the, the compiled stuff for PureScript is under source slash pers, right. and that compiles every single module that we use. And okay. since we use data.maybe, there ought to be a directory for data.maybe in here. And so there's a directory for data. Uh, cool. Why, why not just use a constructor function just? Uh, what do we need to create? No reason. Create just does what we would do. But if I would pass the constructor function? For the single parameter case, is it the same for the multi parameter case as create is on create? Create is what? Create is like the on create function that's like. Yeah. Because yeah. new in JavaScript works a weird way, you can't just have a big return function from your constructor. So you need, you need that over your full control space. Does that make sense? No. Okay. Uh, so we import nothing and just from those aren't dots. Uh, pers slash data dot maybe. And then I think we need to do something a little different, right? Can we can we still do it in one one thing here, or should we do some? There's no instance of nothing. All right, we're not doing that then, <laughs> since nobody said anything. Maybe uh, oh, not a pure. Oh, you can't do that. I'm sorry. Huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we make like a real quantity. That's not spelled right. Quantity. And so this one is, uh, what do we need to do here? Quantity. Then we do just.create quantity. Otherwise, we do nothing. Does that make sense? I see some confused faces. Okay. Is there is there not like a um, like a maybe dot instructor? Yeah, let's find out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I imagine that would actually require like JavaScript FFI, but there is duplicative maybe. No, 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 no. The, what I mean is, uh, it would it would require the maybe type to be aware of JavaScript semantics. Right. Right. You'd have to have like a from JS nullable or something. Uh, maybe? Hey. <laughs> I'm sorry? Applicative maybe? Applicative maybe? Yeah, as a function of applicative maybe, which I'm oh. guessing is pure for. Oh, well, but uh, yeah, that's probably just for its instance of applicative, right? Uh, I feel like you could figure it out if you really wanted to. But let's not, because I. <laughs> right. <laughs> But yes, it's totally possible to have that. And like, maybe the library actually does implement that in, in the FFI so that you can just do this easily. And it just does the null check for you. Uh, so this should work now, yeah? Does it? No. <laughs> Why doesn't it work now? All right, are we going to try and debug this or what are we going to do? Well, what can I do? I got unspecified in the 
failed to pattern that. So, so look, look at the form of that quantity function that you have defined. So it's saying that it failed to pattern that. I think it's cool. That's what I'm getting. Where you, which where are you seeing that? Uh, line 14, the very the top red thing. So, so in in your uh, in your uh, format quantity. Uh -huh. <coughs> Can you show the code again? Which code? Uh, the product, JS. One second, because for some reason it does not work. Yeah, that's where we are. <laughs> no, I mean, for me. No, it doesn't work for anything. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. It's working for who? The only what, it looks what did you do right? <laughs> <laughs> Because this is where I'm going. That's about to be my life. Do you have any suggestions before we go no, down there? No, I don't. All Sorry. right. Let's get in there. This is kind of good, though. This is the kind of stuff that you're going to face when doing this. Yeah. Who doesn't like that? How, how can you see this? Get big on me. There we go. All right. What? Are, mm. So... Quantity, quantity, cool. So this one should be nothing, right? If we step over that. Yep. That seems right. Uh, oh, it's okay. saying function nothing. Do you it's, have to actually yeah. apply the function? Right. It sure. New nothing. Uh, new nothing? Or can we just invoke the nothing? JavaScript, it needs to be new. Well, it might also have a dot create. Well, well it's a create. function, so it looks like you can just apply the function. Like right, but JavaScript semantics, the capital there, it's a constructor function. No. Yeah. It's, it's it might be applied. Yeah, on. yeah. Well, okay. Let's try both ways. How about we do this? <laughs> yeah, because it, might, because it might like return undefined if it is a constructor, is what you're saying. Yeah. It's been a while since I did it. No, you're right, Chris. So I think and then if we do... Oh, great. That's even no, better. Well, if you see that whole thing, it's it's That doesn't look like it. So you said what? New, new nothing? New nothing. Dope. I didn't have to do that. The, so what am I doing did you, wrong? Did you do the call signs <laughs> on nothing? No. If you do that, you'll get an invalid constructor. So, so, so but, but I mean, I understand it's ca it's so so it's a capital. <laughs> case, but it's it's well, yeah. well, but, but it could be a function. Oh, right. And what it actually returns is an empty no op function. So you look at the source. Yeah. But. Why would you have bugging that? No, no. You do nothing. Nothing about value. Oh, interesting. Like yeah. I think the right way to do is probably new just quantity and new nothing. Yeah, that's that's what you really want. Okay, so we're doing yeah. we're doing it wrong. So for just you create. You do just dot create, and that's equivalent to doing new, new just, just with the value. Quantity. Yeah, and then similarly for nothing, we can't right. just call nothing. We have to call the value. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. Does that seem all right for everybody? Is it? No, for me, it's actually just empty length of JavaScript. Can you show the implementation of the quantity again? Of what? Of format quantity. Yeah, sure. So we're casing on what the maybe is? Okay. Can, can you look at the compiled code? See, because like I wonder, is that underscore like it was like a weird like not? Yeah, that's true. Is is what now? On that quantity. Does that seem right? Yeah. Turn that. Turn that. So, no, you can't. How would you, how would you, why do you prefer the underscore versus the 
I'm sorry? If you go back to the well, so, so from a point of view, case yeah. you are, yeah, why would you choose one or the other? For like between this and between having the cases explicit at the top level? But you could try that and see if that fixes the issue. For me, I, in my code, I have format quantity Q and then case Q off. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So this is just sugar for what you wrote. Yeah, I just wonder. I come from the school. We have quite a lot of problems because that you can do kind of things in numerous ways. And that's kind of getting harder. It seems to be already more than you start. You kind of find that kind of the same kind of thing. Problem, sure. So many ways. Uh, well, I mean, I think every language does to some degree, but also like in Scala, this is very much like when you use uh, Good. the partial function. Yeah. You know, and this is like kind of it's sort of like that. So where you don't have to name the argument because you have pattern matching on that argument. True. So yeah, you see that uh, just kind of has to become kind of a, a like a preferred way of doing stuff in the PSQ community, or is it kind of a until they can't find your new features? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's still too much in flux to say that one's uh, the preferred way or like the standard way, you know, because it changes like all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I mean, it's still changing, so you could make it the preferred way, one of them. You could be that person. Well, coming from Scala, I kind of used to case. I went to a case, and I was kind of my tripping. Yeah, yeah, sure. I kind of like the way of just overrun. Yeah. So that's kind of my style is to actually do the top level cases. Yeah. It's just how I naturally like learned it or whatever, and I just grow towards that. Um, okay, so we have one more quick thing before our, our break at three. That's a so thing, right? I just like the parentheses. I did return not with the same line, so it didn't work. Now I did put it with the same line, and that would work, which is great. It's a good great with JSX. Where, where are we talking about? Like, go, to the, go to the JavaScript to plot exactly. So, oh, so you did, like, yeah. And I'm, like, I'm sorry. I didn't explain that, that at all. That, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you do sorry. enter, it won't work. Like there? Yeah, try it now. What? Yeah, try it now. That's blog now. Oh, because oh, yeah, no. the whole because semicolon. Because, because, yeah. because the turn yeah. in a new line, it, it assumes a uh, same to your line. Mm -hmm. You want to put statements after that? Sure, that's fine. OK, so we had one last thing, which was to not do this weird thing where there's like these butts right here, and like just do a regular function, right? So we can do that, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so let's make. Uh, all right, we're going to break some stuff. So, yeah. So wait, do we get it working? <laughs> yeah, it yes. should be. Is it, is it working for you? <laughs> you got to do a new. I got, I got distracted. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Uh, fair, enough. fair enough. I got distracted. <laughs> so, uh, there's this library that gives you, uh, that's a thing, right? Yeah, cool. Yes, yes, FN3. So, uh, normally functions are curried in PureScript, but there's uh, a library that allows you to write uh, functions that would be compiled to uncurried code. So, uh, if we want to do that, all we need to do is instead of returning string arrow, or number arrow int arrow string arrow string, we return FN3 number int string string. So we, we we don't curry. We don't say. We don't use the arrow function. We use function three, right? So function three uh, takes four type arguments and then gives you a type. This is kind of confusing, right? Because it's three and there's five, and like this one's not used, so it's actually four. But just suffice to say, this is the first argument. That's the second. This is the third. That's the return type, and then this is the type of function three. It doesn't really matter. Well, yeah. Let's let's the just. Use it. Not the return type. Not second to last one. <laughs> well, okay. This this is the the uh, kind. Are we not confused enough? Like. <laughs> it makes sense. It it really does. I mean, like, it doesn't make sense because I'm explaining it very poorly. But like, if you look at the uh, underlying theory behind it, it makes a lot of sense, and it it, it seems pers like to me that's very reasonable of a type signature. But like, I fully get that that's craziness. Right? So don't feel like you're wrong. You're right. But also, you're wrong. 
No, you're not wrong. <laughs> All right, let's install something. Peer script functions, is that what it was called? Nope. We get that. There's that. Let's run that again. It's building stuff. Works. So, if we import, oh gosh, data.function.uncurried, uh, and we want to import function three and make function three. Also, we might as well. Yeah, I was wondering how that worked, Barty. I thought we just allowed multiple unqualified imports. I think it's a warning. It's a warning? Yeah. Oh. So you can have one unqualified. Yeah, but one unqualified is what we have. And then you have two. I thought it was error. It's a warning? That's a warning, yeah. Okay. Um, well, so why is not allowed to do unqualified imports? <coughs> like, why can't I just do regular dot maybe dot functions or whatever? Yeah, you can. We just were. But, but there, there can be Yeah, when you when you try to use it with like a big module that has like 40 imports, and you're trying to find out where foobar comes from, and nothing's imported qualified, then you're like, yeah, yeah. I would expect an error only if there are. Well, I think does it does it say anything on conflicts like an error, or only when you try to use it? At least I know when you try to use it, but I don't know if it says anything when it's just two things imported. Maybe. I don't know. It seems like PureScript says, hey, if something is a bad practice, we're going to turn it into a compiler warning or then eventually a compiler error. Like, like uh, orphan type class instances. Right. Yeah. <laughs> another <laughs> another well, divide. Instances are a necessary evil. So, I mean, oh, strong words. OK, so we don't want to return this curried up thing. What we want is to return a function three, where the first argument is number, the second argument, oh god, let's not try to be fancy is a maybe int. The next argument is a string, and we end up returning a string. Does that make any sense? So, so number is the first, maybe int's the second, string is the last argument, and the return type is a string. Does that seem sane? Bless you. Uh, regarding the imports, uh, we did like maybe dot dot uh -huh. and, uh, and f and three. And this is like asking for specific only maybe, but why do I need dot dot? So dot dot pulls in the constructors, the, the value constructors, nothing in just. So nothing in just. We could be explicit about it. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to just pretend like I didn't write that at all. And nobody's going to know we did anything. So <laughs> is that good? No, no. Let's, let's handle that. OK. So. Uh, the, the, we can do this explicitly also. We can say that we want the just constructor and the nothing constructor, and then that pulls that in. But I'm lazy, and so I say just give me all of the constructors. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then function doesn't have a constructor, so we don't need to point it in there. Uh, yeah, so that's mostly it. Mm. Make f and 3 is just a method? Yes, yes, right. So, oops. Uh, we're going to be lazy again and say we have this other thing maybe int string string yeah so that was going to be an error that thing that was happening there um, so we're going to do the implementation as just a normal pure script function because it's really weird to not so that's that's what we're doing and then we're going to expose this one format thing where it's just going to make <coughs> A function three from four. And how do you know the namespace? Like, how did you, you know that it's dot dot function dot uncode? Like, how did you know that? Uh, how did I know that, or how did I find it out? No, how, how can I find out? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. The way you can find out. So for this thing, that's not really that easy to figure out because this is sort of like not a well-known feature until you start asking. Why do I have to have these curried functions? It's, can I make them uncurried, right? And then someone points you to data.function that uncurried. But like, I don't know how you would figure that out without it because like, the signatures aren't great. There's not a lot of people talking about it. But like, if you ask the right questions. But uh, once I realized that it existed, and then I was looking for function three, 
then uh, it tells you the module that you're in, so you know which one to pull in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that answer your question, though? I mean, this, what, this pursuit helped you, right? Eventually. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, so pursuit's like my, my uh, best friend, basically. Um, All right. Does this make sense, what we did here? Uh, yeah. Huh? Explain. Sure, 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 explain. Okay, so format prime. This is the same as what we just wrote for format. It's just normal pure script. This is how you would write it in pure script. From the JavaScript side, we don't want to have to do that weird curry right. butt thing, right? So uh, if we give back a function three, we can do that, right? So we just need to be able to construct a function three, right? So in, in data.function.uncurried, there's the types of these uncurried functions, and then there's helpers to make the uncurried functions. So make function three takes a curried function from A to B to C to D and gives you a function three from A, B, C, D. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah, I'm also curious about the two implementations there. I, uh, I did like a, I don't know Haskell at all, but the, the apostrophe at the end seems familiar to the intro that I read, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah, we can, we can do something different. Uh, Oops. Okay. And it's, it's another version. We don't need to differ at all. I'm oh, oh, okay. It's yeah. part of the identifier. You can use the, you can use apostrophes in your identifier names. Right. But, but that's um, some sort of a convention. Yeah, it's yeah. a Haskell convention of like this prime is like some other version or something related to that. Okay. Like, I see. All right. But here you're still creating a mm -hmm. current function, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we can be explicit and say that we only export format, right? Which is our uncurried function. The, the prime is the curried function. The right? Prime is the curried yeah. function. Yeah. These are all just the like implementation details. The right. function three takes that curried function right. and creates an FM3. So uh, you'll notice the type signature for format is not curried. Right. But we're still using the curried function. Right? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. That's one of the things that actually gets called stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Something like performance files, you haven't gotten around. Mm -hmm. I guess the only issue is how you're calling this function that's changed into the JavaScript. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see what it compiles to. You're asking about like the stack frames. Yeah. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still have that same Right, because the function is still. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks. It's just to make like. So yeah, so we call it. We can, you can make like a JavaScript library that you actually wrote in pure script, and for a user in JavaScript land, they would have right. to know about it. Right, right, about the current, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. I sort of feel like there's a way to do that as well. Can we, uh, can we do something? Is that, is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> am, I, am I asking the wrong questions? <laughs> so let's say that we did that. Oops. Nope, not that. And just did the lambda inside of this right here. So this is, oh, we didn't talk about lambdas at all. <laughs> so this is lambda syntax. Uh, you start with a slash and then your arguments. So I wonder if we do that, does the compiler do some weird trickery that it knows it's using an anonymous function and then just like inlines it? There you go, dude. No performance overhead. <laughs> I'm sorry? Sure, sure, sure. So, okay. Did you explain why you compiled the lambda? I didn't get it. You changed to lambda, and then it didn't work. Why? No, no, no. So, uh, first, first question, do you get the lambda there? Does yes, that make sense? Okay. I used yesterday for the first time Haskell. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So, there's an optimization in pure script that if you have an anonymous function, and you call make function on that anonymous function, it doesn't create that uh, curried anonymous function and then apply make function three, what it does is just make an actual function that has three arguments and the implementation. And so, and so this might even be just generic, like the, the compiler is, the compiler specializing specifically for the FM constructors or is it just in general when it sees this pattern of, oh, you're transforming this function to this, it's part of this, oh, I just inline so, where I can. So there's a lot of optimizations and I haven't been following them for a long time. Although Michael might know. I feel like if you ask him, he'll, he'll be the one. Most of the optimizations are special cases of more, more libraries. 
Okay. Can I see the, uh, the pure script again? Yeah. But the important thing is that they give you the same semantic value, yeah, right? Yeah. It's just one might perform better because you're not dealing with closures. Right. Does that make sense? OK. So uh, we got a problem, right, which is that this don't work no more <laughs> because we're using it incorrectly. But if we use it correctly, uh, replace that with a comma and a space everywhere. Then, ta-da, right? Now it looks like a normal JavaScript function that you would call. It looks like somebody wrote this module, product, whatever that is, and they have this JavaScript function in it, and it just looks normal. That's really cool. Yeah. And this is just such a good way, like, if you wanted to start writing with your front end module, yeah. you know. This is like exactly what so, this is a good like ask for forgiveness. Kind of so that's fine if this is like on the edge of my library that I'm going to use from JavaScript. But mm -hmm. if I'm going to use this in yeah, PureScript. In PureScript. Yeah, then you have the to like do way, some weird or thing. Or do I have to pass it like tuple? Or do I... So uh, data function uncurried also gives you yeah run function three, which takes the function three and gives you back okay. the curried version. Okay. But like that's silly. If you already if you own the code, then just export both, and then use the JavaScript one where you want, use the non-JavaScript one where you don't. And, and this is actually kind of a cool example. If you look at the source, it, it has the you know the extern JS or, or not extern JS, but the uncurry JS, and actually shows how uh, if you go up the tree and go on, yeah, go to function and then uncurry.js, it actually shows how it does the foreign imports and everything. And does the, the implementation yeah. for make functions <coughs> and then for run functions. I mean, it's a fairly simple library, but like, I think there's somewhat of a barrier to knowing how to use it properly. Though once you use it once or twice, it becomes less of a barrier, I think. Um, so I think there's like a break at 3, and it's 301. Should we break? Yeah, let's, let's, let's take a break. Good. There's information in the Slack channel about it. Cool. How do you have a black GitHub? Oh gosh, I'm just exposing all of my life to you guys, aren't I? <laughs> uh, so. He's got stylish installed. Exactly. I don't know which one it is. What is it? One of these is the thing, but you know, you just turn it off. Stylish and it's fine. Yeah. It's it doesn't attack for one. But then when you go to a page that, that you don't have stylish. Yeah. yeah. I, I mixed that Yeah, it's awful. I was using Firefox as a dark background like text. So mm -hmm. it uses that by default on pages, but some of this. All right. I'm taking a break. I don't know what you all are doing. <laughs>